So I, I'd like to know a little bit more about the federation that you represent. Okay. I'd like to know, we know that you brought a full team of athletes yes. from Italy. We actually are looking forward to see how they did in the okay. event. Okay. So we, we want to know how they did, see if that is a winner's circle at the yes. end. So, yes. But talk to us about how that gets. So you're doing the coaching for them, you do the nutrition. Talk to me a little bit about all the things that you okay. do for these athletes. Okay. That you let me explain uh, what, I, what I did in Italy. Uh, in 1988, uh, 1989, we started a movement of natural bodybuilding in Italy. So we founded a first federation of natural bodybuilding in Italy. I was one of the founders. And since I knew many uh, people that were in the natural bodybuilding in the United States, like the president at, the, at that time of the WNBF and Andy Bustinto of the NGA, I decided to bring the Italian athletes from Italy to the United States so they can compete together. So that was the beginning of everything. And what I, what I give to the athletes, not just the nutrition and training, I want to give them emotions. And the greatest thing that they can get when they come to the United States and they compete with foreign athletes and other athletes, they get emotional. And they, they get something that they will never be able to get in their own country. So that's what I love the most, to bring them here so they can compete with other athletes and feel like the greatest emotion. And when I give them emotion, I see them happy, and when they are happy, I am in the sky. Beautiful, beautiful. And let me talk a little bit about the goals of your federation. Uh, obviously, you're doing great things. Uh, I love the idea of, of having them exposed to other countries to compete internationally. I can't agree with you more better motivation than to get it's on like, a plane. It's like a prize for them, you know. You, you gain your, uh, your class in, in Italy, I give you the possibility to come to the United States. I sponsor you, you come to the United States, and you compete in the United oh, States. Oh, so let's, let's talk about That's interesting that you mentioned that. So they have to win a certain they requirement. Have, yes, yes, so. they have to win. They, well, the requirement, they need to win their class. We have different classes in Italy as well, mm -hmm. pretty much the same thing that they do here. Okay. And they have to win at least their class in the Italian championship. When they win their class, then they can come over. So one championship a year, they win their yes, class. We do. We do actually uh, three shows a year in Italy. Two mm -hmm. selections for the Italian championship. Two selections for the Italian championship, and then the final Italian championship. That's what we do. So one North Italy selection, South Italy selection, and then the Italian championship. That's what we do. That's the way we started with the first federation. Then we split from the first federation, and in 2005, I founded this new federation. The the FIBBN, the, the one that I'm bringing the athletes with this time, and that's what we do. We're still doing that. So two selection, North Italy selection, South Italy selection, and the Italian championship. And you have to win one of the classes at the Italian championship, either junior or men's physique or whatever. We also do a European championship. We did like uh, four European championships in France. And if they win a class during the European Championship, they get the chance to come over here to the United States and compete with the American athletes. And, and how do you make the selection finalists? So just based on those, how do you decide, right? Because I will imagine with all these events, you have an array of winners. And uh, so do you pick a winner from each event? Is it the overall? Is it the class? Is it a weight class? Is it... Okay, well, um, if you want to come to the United States, you have to win your class. Then... For example, the men's physique, we have two different classes. We get the overall of the men's physique. That guy gets sponsored to come here to the United States. In the bodybuilding, each well, we have different class, light, lightweight class, uh, light heavyweight, heavyweight, middle, middle weight, and then we have the overall. But each one that wins it, each class, he has the opportunity to come here to the United States and compete. That's excellent. That's a, I definitely see that as a great motivator for yes, yes. for athletes to come in. And then, talk to me a little bit about the goals of the federation. You're obviously doing great things. I uh, love what you're doing. We're bringing the team and and having them here. No, I no thank. Oh I've please, seen thank you, thank you. But um, but you would have. Oh, please. <laughs> but um, yeah. But, I, but we definitely know that the federation is bigger than just the trip to the U.S. Yes. So, so what are the things that you're active on and what are the goals of the Federation for you in Italy, all the things that you want to accomplish with um, it? The things that I want to accomplish, well, first of all, be an example. So I, like, I still like to work out. I have my own problems. I cannot work out as I used to work out when I won my Italian championship because for health problems, I cannot do the same thing I was able to do when I, I was younger. 
but it's okay. I still work out. I do what I can with the body that I have, and I want to be an example for my athletes. And the athletes that are in my federation, what I, I give them everything that they need. I mean, if they need anything, I'm there to help them. That's why also when I started bodybuilding, I was 16. At 19, I decided to go to the university and started pharmacology because many, many of my friends were on steroids. So I needed to know what they were doing in order to help them, even though they were on steroids. So I decided to study pharmacology and I became doctor in pharmacology. Then I studied human biology because I needed to understand better the human body. And then I studied nutrition, so I have three degrees. And I, and I take this three degree and I bring it to the Federation and I give to my athletes the opportunity to use my knowledge if they have any problem or if they have any questions about it. That's what I do personally. And as a president of the Federation, uh, I'm always there behind them to help them what I can. As a federation in general, with all my team in the federation, the vice president, the secretary, what we try to do, we do a natural bodybuilding course, training course. So we do an academy. So we do a specific personal trainer course for a trainer that wants to become expert on natural bodybuilding. That's what we do. And that way we try to teach to the personal trainer what they have to do in the gym. Because the first problem that we, we, we see in the gym is that the, the kid that goes to the gym, sometimes he, he sees a personal trainer that suggests him to do steroids right, right away. So what we do as a federation, we try to give uh, uh, knowledge, uh, culture and information so that the personal trainer w knows exactly what he has to teach and do with the athletes or the first time a person coming to the gym if he wants to do naturally. So we, we're trying to teach. So example and teaching, the two things combined together maybe will help the world of bodybuilding. I'm saying maybe. That's my hope. That's what I do. I'm not sure 100% that I will reach that. but. Uh, that's what I'm trying to do. One step at a time, one person, and everything yes. counts. And you're yes. certainly yeah. doing a lot. Yeah, exactly. Even, even if it was just for one person that decides not to use steroids and be in the bodybuilding naturally, for me, that is already a result, a great result. Excellent. Can I agree with you more? And, and I got I to gotta tell you, again, I'm very impressed. We look forward to having you in so many more shows in the U.S. because you definitely bring, you bring, first of all, you bring a good team. So your team is prepared. You can tell that they have put the time and that you have taken through all the proper steps. I got one more question for you yes. at the very higher level. Now, forgetting, forgetting Italy, forgetting U.S., now talking at a global level. Um, many of the things that I have seen is, you know, you see the shows moving away really from bodybuilding, getting all these new parts of physique, okay. getting so the natural, the bodybuilding, the way probably we knew it back then, getting less competitors, and there are other categories that are growing, which is great for the sport, okay. right? But it looks like almost bodybuilding as it was, right? Not physics, not modeling, not... It has been almost left for the guys with the steroid use in events that are continue to grow, right? The big shows, that we don't have to mention any names, right? They come with all the technology, they come with all the muscle power, and they're doing all these great things. So tell me where do you think uh, at a global level where do you see natural bodybuilding going do you see it growing do you see people understanding it more do you see people wanting to be more natural instead of going the other route i mean what do you see at that bigger level that you're obviously applying at your level in italy and doing great things for the athletes so so tell me how you okay. see it but first of all i want to tell you this i think bodybuilding is a big family um I have my own philosophy, and that's what I put on my federation, that is natural bodybuilding, and I try to teach natural bodybuilding, but I still have friends who are not natural, Correct. and they are bodybuilders as well. I respect them, but I don't agree for what they are doing, okay? Uh, so I think the bodybuilding is a big family. Uh, the fact that we have new classes coming in the sport I see it as just as a positive thing uh, because they, they help a uh, youngster, youngster to get closer to our sports. Bodybuilding, even fitness model, men's physique, bikini, figure, all these classes, the basic to 
to, to be able to compete in these classes is always bodybuilding. Doesn't matter which class you compete. If you want to compete as a fitness model, you want to compete as a man's physique, the workout that you do, the nutrition that you do, is bodybuilding. So it all comes to the base. So bodybuilding is like, is like the ground where they all grow. So when they started men's physique, it was at the end of, night, of the 70s, Natural Federation decided to invent the men's physique. And it was radicalized by the IFBB at the time because they were saying, what are these guys with long shorts? And now, you know, even the other organization are using men's physique as their, you know, front line. The greatest classes are now our men's physique and bikini, not anymore bodybuilding. But that's the evolution of sport. It all, it all are, it's all in the family of bodybuilding. That's my opinion. It's all bodybuilding. But in different classes so that everybody can join. And it's positive because, not to, okay, in natural bodybuilding, we try also as bodybuilder to be natural. But if you want to compete as a men's physique or fitness model, even if you use steroids, you have to use a little bit of steroids, not too much, because otherwise you pass into bodybuilding. So that is that is still a positive thing. So if you use less, that I I see I always see everything positive. In in life, I always see everything's positive. That's a part of myself. So even that thing I see as a positive thing because people are gonna use less steroids, even though they are not natural. So bodybuilding, I see it as a big family, and all. All the base is bodybuilding, and from bodybuilding, they come all the other classes. That I see as an evolution. I don't see as a threat. I don't see. Uh, I was a bodybuilder at the time when I was competing. There was no men's physique. There, well, there was men's physique, but I was not competing as a men's physique. But they were like, for example, bikini or fitness model. Uh, but now I think that that is a great opportunity for the athletes and the young people that come to the gym. You know, they see a, a fitness model, the bikini, say, I want to look like those people. I don't want to look like the bodybuilder, the extreme one, the extreme muscle, the extreme definition. I want to look like that guy that is not good looking. So that, that I see that just as positive, as a positive. So you still see natural fitness in general growing? Exactly. I see, I see natural fitness growing. If you are asking me the question, do you see the natural bodybuilding growing comparing to classic bodybuilding? I, um, I don't know at the moment. I, I, I see now um, a stable situation between the two. Um, Drug and in sport, in all sports, are always combined. I mean, unfortunately, the doping um, is always in, in all sports, not just in bodybuilding. So it's not a, just a problem of bodybuilding. It's a, pro it's a general problem of all the, all the sports. Um, in our sports, what we see is the aesthetic. So we see the final results, the fact that it increased very much the muscular size. Uh, but it's the general problem of all sports. And so I, I, I'm, I must say that at the moment what I see, it's, it's still stable. So the way it was in the past is still now. Bodybuilding is increasing because we have all these classes and at the same time the natural organization are increasing. Which one is going to win? No one. I think they will all stay. There will always be someone who wants to use drugs to improve their sights, their strength, but there will always be some moral, let's say moral guys that will like to, to stay in a natural way. They're both but different different philosophy and one 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 group of that philosophy won't agree with the other, but I, I see them growing together. I, I go to the gym and I see big guys there are on the stairs and we work out together. I'm natural. Well, never mind. I have my physiology. You have your own. It's okay. It's okay. We don't have to fight. I fight for my own idea, for what I believe. Maybe one day I win. Maybe not. I don't know. But that's what I do. So I see the positive side of it. I don't know if you understand what, what I'm. Love the philosophy. Love it. So. Again, can't thank you enough for taking the time to talk okay. to us and, and for being here, bringing your team, okay. going through this whole, we know it's not easy to bring a team of athletes and it's definitely not a cheap thing to do either, yes. right? It is costly and it's a commitment. Commitment from everyone, the athletes, from yourself, the federation, from everybody. 
So we thank you for doing that. Um, any other closing comments that you'd like to add before we, uh, we close the interview? Uh, yes, love each other and be an example. That's it. I can't say any more to that. That, that. that was perfect. Thank you so much, Michael. Thank you, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Best of luck. We want to hear about the winner's circle at the end, okay. for sure.